it is time. We must rank the 22 short films about Springfield. Why? Well, mostly out of curiosity since I joked about it recently. But really, it's an excuse to talk about this cool episode again. Plus, it's fun to argue about. Now, I'm certainly not the first person to try their hand at this. Three years ago, YouTuber Citizen Hal did his ranking of these segments, so I recommend you check out his video as well. It's a fun watch. Maybe you'll agree with his more than mine. My definition of what constitutes a short film is slightly different from his. And let's just face it, we gotta do a lot of cheating to get to 22, so let's just roll with the punches. Here are my top 22 short films from 22 Short Films About Springfield. For number 22 through 19, we're grouping these into its own special tier called These Aren't Really Short Films, You Crumbum. Because they're not really segments, you know? Just transitional or framing devices to get things moving along. So number 22 is the journey of Wiggum's Donut over to Flanders' house. Number 21 is the bee traveling from Lisa to Smithers. Number 20 is the Bart and Milhouse wrap-up. And number 19 is the Bart and Milhouse introduction. There's obviously not much to these, the B gives us a cool POV shot, so it's better than the donut. The Bart Millhouse ending does a decent job closing things out, and their intro has Millhouse not paying attention. These scenes are in the episode, so we're ranking them, but they gotta be at the bottom. Moving on. The exciting conclusion of the three-part Lisa Gum Saga. This part is kind of dull overall, but I do enjoy Lisa's line about looking like a real person now, and then Nelson immediately raining on her parade. I mostly remember this for that bald spot. It's so bizarre seeing her scalp drawn like this. I feel like conveying Barter Lisa's scalp amongst their hair is basically an impossible task, and it's kind of hilarious that this is what they had to land on. The Reverend Lovejoy scene is fine. I like his disingenuous scolding when he condemns the dog to hell, and of course, don't stop the music. It's kind of cathartic seeing him get back at Ned for bugging him so much. At the same time, there's not much to it. Just an awkward character moment, and then it's on to the next thing. There is much better stuff overall. The Snake Wiggum fight is another sort of transitional scene, continuing their Pulp Fiction homage. It has three things going for it. First, I love Wiggum's general cheeriness with his friendly, Oh hey, I know you. Second, these kids excitedly dancing around these letters for some reason. And three, this kick in the face. I don't know, this drawing is super iconic. Adding this to the list of Simpson cells I wish I could own. The exciting preamble of the Lisa Gum Saga. This one is great for Lisa reaction shots as Marge does her thing. The idea of Marge stacking mayonnaise on top of peanut butter grosses me out so much. It's such a disgusting visual. Lisa says she smells like a sandwich. A horrible mayo peanut butter sandwich. At least the bees like it. I can't rank this part higher because the setup is a little boring and that's going to be the difference in this kind of murderer's row. I have no idea if I'm ranking this one too low. Like, Professor Frank's song is awesome. Fading to black on him is a great gag. Hank Azaria's performance really sells it. At the same time, we did run out of time. Frank did get screwed out of content. The joke he has is good, but that's all he got. By necessity, I think Frank has to get screwed out of a better ranking, right? Yeah, I probably put this one too low. The exciting midpoint of the Lisa Gum Saga. It's probably clear by now that I don't view Lisa's story as the most exciting part of the episode. This middle part shines the most, however, due to the crazy escalation. Love the visual of Ned Flanders taking a hammer to her hair, then, of course, everyone just barging their way into the kitchen. I appreciate how they insisted on the most random-ass characters, 
like Sideshow Mel and Uter and the Capital City Goofball. Good stuff. I said it in my episode review, but I still can't believe that they went for this parody. This has to be the most awkward joke in Simpsons history, right? I love that it's Kirk, of all people, fumbling around trying to make this situation not weird. Perfect casting. My only nitpick is that its maximum enjoyment is due, in part, to the shock factor. And after multiple viewings, the sheer absurdity of the situation doesn't quite hit me as hard anymore. Kinda like how I don't cringe as hard at Scott's Tots these days. Still a very funny homage though. We all love Dr. Nick. He's awesome. I do feel torn about his segment in that I find the first half pretty boring and it's the grandpa stuff carrying it. Don't get me wrong, there's some witty back and forths during the hearing. It's just the typical sort of Dr. Nick malpractice that we're used to. But then when it goes to the gritty hospital drama, I'm fully on board. I like how they follow up the old timey Mr. Burns segment with this one, also full of nonsense jargon. Grandpa being electrocuted in the background is such a funny visual. It definitely makes up for a slow start. The very tall man rules, and I don't know why he didn't become a Simpsons sensation. Maybe Ian Maxtone Graham objected? Anyway, this one is driven by his force of personality. The way his legs emerge from the car, how he lumbers over to him, how Nelson is practically spellbound into humiliating himself. Obviously, the voice does a lot of the heavy lifting. Fun fact, it's based on an SNL character, Tippy Turtle, according to the commentary. Go listen to a clip, it's dead on. I guess we could argue this isn't the most unique setup in the world, a very simple cause and result, but it's nice seeing Nelson get his just desserts. Someone go get summoning salt because Apu did the very first speedrun of a party. This segment is Cuckoo Bananas. I really appreciate the variety it provides, with silly dance visuals, clever wordplay, some risque action in there. It's very meta how it hits all the party cliches. Like all great speedrunners, you end up thinking, damn, how does Apu make the perfect party look so easy? It even closes out strong with Han's moment. Like the Herman segment, maybe the novelty of its gimmick fades a bit after multiple rewatches. Mostly, I like seeing Apu get out of the quickie mart. At first glance, the Bumblebee Man segment just feels like more Bumblebee Man. When I think about it in my head, I want to rank it much lower. But my god, when those oranges start pouring out of that cabinet, I laugh every time. After the very matter-of-fact setup, it really punches you hard with all that slapstick in a row. It goes from 0 to 100 and stays there. Unlike the Apu gimmick segment, Bumblebee Man lacks some joke variety. However, it goes so big and so ridiculous, I gotta rank it higher. I'm kind of amazed at how good this scene is, even all these years later. Because you're like, they're just aping the Tarantino style dialogue from Pulp Fiction and that's it. That's literally it. But it's so well executed. Like the source material, I am enjoying just sitting here listening to them banter about hamburgers. The Krusty Burger vs McDonald's comparison is a great way to initiate the reference. You'd think I'd be sick of this because everyone did Pulp Fiction dialogue. It's just fun hearing the Simpsons characters banter like this. My only wish is that Eddie added more to this scene. He kind of feels like the third wheel here. Comic Book Guy deserves to be this high for two reasons. One, the rare photo of Sean Connery signed by Roger Moore. Like, why? What is this weird James Bond collectible? What was Janice thinking at the time? Such a weird thing to own. Secondly, we gotta talk about Hank Azaria's flawless performance as Comic Book Guy. The droll, exhausted way he goes through the ordeal. His delivery of this charming Hamburglar adventure and insisting on telling us the jumble answer is fries. 
Sean Connery, Roger Moore, and the Hamburglar. This whole segment is a grab bag of odd non sequiturs, and it's amazing. So many of these short films are centered around some kind of escalating panic, and basically no one is better at that than Homer. They hit upon the perfect plot device that is inherently silly, but also believable that Homer would screw up this badly. I just enjoy seeing some Homer Maggie comedy. She brings a new flavor to his typical jokes. I will say that Santa's Little Helper doesn't really bring much to this thing. He is like the Eddie of this segment. Still, you can't deny Homer's raw comedy potential, so he's gotta be up here this high. So, am I overrating this one? Having second thoughts here. I like many of the individual jokes, like Moe and Barney arguing about his tab, and Moe passing out at the end. But my god, I can't get over that joke about Moe flickering on and off the lights. Barney and Snake's facial reactions throughout have me in stitches. Them silently watching Moe run away, Barney looking around in bewilderment at the lights. Just top-notch animation and storyboarding here. It takes a solid premise and ratchets it up to 11. Burns and Smithers are like the funniest duo on the show, so I gotta rank them this high. This thing is classic Burns Smithers. That drawing of allergy-stricken Smithers makes me laugh so much. The way he hunches over with his tongue hanging out. Also, have you like really listened to Mr. Burns' insults in this thing? He calls him a stuporous funker. His leg is a mephitic clodhopper. One more jostle, you wretched shirkaday. Today, I learned shirkaday isn't even a word, but it should be, dang it. You can tell they had such a good time writing this segment. It really leaps off the screen. Thanks for your sacrifice, Waylon. Here, have some booze. If you saw my last video, you're not going to be surprised by this ranking. I freaking love the Cletus segment. It kind of breaks my brain that it's as good as it is. It's so aggressively pointless. Let's do this whole theme song and make up a focal rhyme for the story about Cletus finding boots that Brandine quickly rejects. It's got some of that Chief Wiggum energy from before, where I just enjoy listening to them banter. Cletus's delivery of to wait for a woman of less discriminating tastes will forever live rent free in my brain. And then closing with her ma on her dang roof. God, it's so corny, I feel like Nelson from earlier. I'm just spellbound by it. I couldn't put it at number one because, you know, but this thing deserves more respect. It is the perfect Cletus segment. I just think Steamed Hams is neat. Look, you don't need me explaining why Steamed Hams is the best. Liking this thing is a cliche by now. I've talked about it before, so I'll keep it brief. I think it's a deserving number one pick because it does everything well from every other segment. Great concept, very meta, fun title sequence, clever dialogue, cartoony escalation, and an amazing punchline. Come on, it's steamed hams. What I'm more interested is in hearing from all of you. What are your favorite segments in 22 short films about Springfield? Is steamed hams your number one? Or do you dare defy the Simpsons canon like some wretched shirkaday? It was pretty weird trying to rank all these, to be honest. It was like ranking my favorite jokes from Last Exit to Springfield. Also, go check out Citizen Hal's video too. He ranks some of these segments way differently than mine. So if you think I was unfair to your favorite, maybe you'd like his picks more. Comedy is so subjective, it's interesting what kind of stuff everyone gravitates to most. As always, thanks for watching.